August 29th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from the New Testament. Finally then, brothers and sisters, we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus, that as you received instruction from us about how you must live and please God, as you are in fact living, that you do so more and more. For you know what commands we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is God's will, that you become holy, that you keep away from sexual immorality, that each of you know how to possess his own body in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God. In this matter no one should violate the rights of his brother or take advantage of him, because the Lord is the avenger in all these cases, as we told you earlier and warned you solemnly. For God did not call us to impurity, but in holiness. Consequently, the one who rejects this is not rejecting human authority, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. Now on the topic of brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you are practicing it toward all the brothers and sisters in all of Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so more and more, to aspire to lead a quiet life, to attend to your own business, and to work with your hands, as we commanded you. In this way, you will live a decent life before outsiders and not be in need. Now, we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, so also we believe that God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep as Christians. For we tell you this by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not go ahead of those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a shout of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be suddenly caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. God, I am really struggling with something that Paul's talking about here in in this chapter, chapter 4. When he talks about, now we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who are asleep or dead, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. And we know as modern day Christians, the Thessalonians were very uh, concerned and scared that, that people who had recently become Christians uh, from Paul's first visit had, had since passed away and they were concerned about what happened to them. And as current day Christians, modern day Christians, we know what happens, that if you truly are saved, we know what happens, we get to spend eternity with God. Um, it's the part I struggle with God is, I agree that when somebody passes away, that we grieve differently than people who have no hope. That, that if I were to pass away today, I would hope that my friends um, wouldn't grieve to great depths instead actually celebrate because hopefully they would know where I'm going that it, I'm headed to spend eternity that I'm headed home and it would be crazy awesome and I know grieving isn't an end isn't because of an end it's grieving because they're sad that that person's no longer in their life I do know it's different for Christians who have died and unbelievers have a harder time grasping the whole concept of death because there's nothing to look forward to. But, but there's this gray area in the middle that's driving me crazy. Uh, and it's turning into a pet peeve of mine. And, and I, th I think Christians are perpetuating this problem. I see on Facebook when somebody passes away, um, Christian or otherwise, and again, we don't know people who are, say they're Christians. We don't know if they're really Christians. Only you know that. But the first response is, you know, things like, um, well, I know God's taking care of X, Y, and Z, whoever it is. Or I know that uh, they're going to heaven. Or I know that when they get to heaven, they'll see so-and-so. Or I know when you get to heaven, you'll see them. God, that's a lie that... 
That's a big lie that we're telling other people. You know, we will adamantly say there's a process to be saved. We will say that you have to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. There's a process that not everyone, sadly, gets to be saved. Yet here we so willingly say, oh, yeah, in comfort. Yeah, I'm sure they're in heaven. And we're more concerned with making them feel comfortable than, than telling them the truth. And I understand comfort. I understand having friends who've died that I don't know if they're going to be in heaven. I understand that incredible pain and people wanting to comfort you. But giving you false hope, I'm not saying you have to say, oh, they're going to hell. But there's other comforting words, God, that I believe that we can say at that time when we're not sure if they're going to end up in heaven instead of lying to them to simply comfort them. I just posted on Facebook the other day a saying that says, I'd rather offend someone to heaven than flatter them to hell. And that's what I struggle with when, when I hear Paul talking about this. I know he's right. Of course, Paul's right. Um, that we grieve differently. And we should know that those who are resting, meaning they eventually will rise again, uh, we, we have hope and we have faith in that. But going on to talk about those who aren't saved, that should put a big burden on our heart. Burden being good, God. A big burden on our heart because we are called to talk to these people about you. We are called to be disciples, to talk to other people about you and, and the amazingness that you've done in our own lives. Our lives are supposed to reflect you. God, I, I don't want to have somebody close to me pass away again. And have to go through that grief and despair of, did I do everything possible? Now, I know that you saved them. <laughs> Let's be really clear that. But everything that you called me to do in their life. One of my friends the other day said, I, I pray that I bothered my friend enough that he's in heaven. <laughs> I, thought, I thought that was an awesome way to put, put that. Um, he's one of my teenage guys. And <laughs> it was just awesome that he thought that way. But are we being nice to the point that we're lying to people to provide them comfort? Whereas that's not comfort at all, that eventually they'll buy into that lie, or maybe they already do, and they'll end up in hell as well. God, please help us realize that we're not called to be comfortable. We're not called to provide gray, white lies to people just to make other people feel comfortable. We are called to say the truth. Now, you also call us to say the truth with tact, with kindness and, and love. <laughs> and there's different ways that we can talk to people about this. But to simply say straight across the board that everyone who passes away and it's announced on social media, oh, I'm sure you'll get to see them in heaven someday. That's a lie that is going to cause further problems down the line as they believe into that lie themselves and allow the world to, to take over their life. God, help, help give us the strength that we need in those situations to say the right words that you want us to, stay, to say to those who are grieving. I have people in my family that if they, they died right now, I'm not sure that they would go to heaven. And I pray for them. And for those that, that let me, I, I talk to them about you. But I don't ever want to give someone false hope. God, the only hope that we can ever have is in you. That's the hope I want to give people. I still want to provide them comfort and love and grace and mercy at those times when they are hurting so much that they've just lost their loved one. But I also don't want to add a lie on top of it. So help provide the strength and the words I need during those times to say what you need me to say. The truth that's going to speak into their heart that they'll either recognize as truth then or they'll recognize as truth later on down the line when you need them to. God, my heart breaks for people who have lost people who they don't know if they're going to heaven or not. My heart breaks for people who are receiving half-truths or lies in the name of comfort. God, I just ask for your truth and your hope to be shouted nationwide to everyone. That the only peace, the only comfort, the only truth that we will ever know is in you. God, help my voice, 
Help my words to always speak that truth to others, even if it is painful and uncomfortable for me. Allow me to love them enough to always speak truth to them. In your son's name I pray, amen.